In this video, we're going to learn how to do RAG on our own machine or local RAG with Llama CPP. So what is RAG? So it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. And I find it's easiest to understand if you start from the last word, so the generation. So this is, I guess, what we're all kind of familiar with, with ChatGPT. We can put in some sort of prompt and an LLM is going to generate us some sort of response. Uh, and what we're talking about here is question answer. So I've got a question and we're going to get an answer. The augmented is I'm giving you some context or some extra information to try and answer my question. So perhaps it's some information that doesn't exist or is new or didn't exist when that LLM was trained. So I'm like, here's the information. Can you now answer my question? And you could paste that information in or you could retrieve it from somewhere. And that's the retrieval step. So we're saying, I'm going to take that question. I'm going to work out for that question. What's the relevant information? I'm going to then put that information in and then we're going to get the LLM to answer our question. And this technique is for question and answers. So I've got a question, it's on some particular data that I've got somewhere and I want to know an answer. It's not for doing, for example, summarization. If you want to summarize uh, a bit of text, you can just paste that text in and have it summarized. But this is purely where we have a question and we want to have it answered. So I thought about making a diagram showing how this works, but Langchain have got a way better one. Again, I'll put a link to that in the des description below. So we have a question on the left. We've then got to go and retrieve the, the context relevant to that question, pass it into the prompt. The question then comes around and into the prompt. And then the LLM is then going to answer the question with the context and give us an answer. Most of the work is in that retrieval box there. And so it kind of cuts up into four parts. So we've got the loading of our data, whatever that data might be. It could be podcast transcripts. It could be articles. It could be our own documents, whatever it is. We're then going to cut it up into chunks a bit smaller so that they can match our questions a bit better. And then we're going to create some embeddings, which are arrays of floating point numbers. And then finally, we're going to find somewhere to store them. Let's go through that one by one. So loading document. Let's launch IPython. Um, we're going to have a look at an episode of the This Day in AI podcast. Again, I'll put that in the description. So we're going to look at this using the rich console. This is purely to make it easier for you to see what's going on in this video. So let's have a look at that text. And you can see the articles that's talking about Claude Sonnet at the, at the start and their experience using it. And there's about 60 minutes worth of of text in here. So uh, we've got about 60,000 characters or so. So now we need to split this text up into chunks. And I'm going to do that using the Langchain text splitters library. So this is a library that Langchain pulled out and it's quite good for, for chopping up your text into chunks. So we'll import from there the recursive character text splitter. We're going to say our chunk size is 300 characters with an overlap of 50. And then we can call create documents and get put in an array so it expects to see a array of documents and we'll pass in our text. And it comes back with 247 documents. And if we have a look at one, you can see, so Chris, last week, of course, the big news in the episode was that we would do a daily drive off Sonnet 3.5. So that's the first bit of, uh, of text in the transcript. Okay, so now it's time for the third column. So this is create embeddings for those chunks of text. So for our 247 chunks of text. So we're going to install Llama CPP Python. If you're using a Mac, make sure you've got this minus D Llama metal equals on uh, flag set. Otherwise, it's going to work only on the CPU and not the GPU, and it'll be a bit slower than you might hope for. So we're going to import Llama CPP. We're going to import time, and then we're going to import a function that I've got for chunking up uh, documents into batches. We'll now uh, initialize Llama CPP, and we're going to use the mixed bread embeddings library. So I've got a GGUF file for that. Then we need to make sure we set embeddings to true. Now there are lots of other embeddings libraries that you can use. So Nomic have, have some, some good ones and then there are a bunch of others as well. But Mixed Bread is supposed to be uh, one of the coolest ones. I thought let's give that a try. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at calling the create embedding function on the LLM object. Um, it can, can take in a single document or it can take in an array of documents. So we're going to give it an array of one and you can see it comes back. So we've got a dictionary, it says object list, and then it's under, underneath data, and then it's going to have all the embeddings uh, that we need. Let's now run this over all the documents. So we're going to do it in batches. So we'll do it in batches of 100, and then we're going to collect the results in this documents embedding variable. We're then going to use this chunk function to chop up the 247 documents into batches of, so it'll be 100, 147. And then we're going to start the timer. We'll iterate over the batches, create the embeddings for each batch, put the resulting document and the embeddings into the document embeddings variable. And then we'll time how long it took. And then at the end, we'll get, collect all the text and we'll work out how many characters per second were, were generated. 
and we'll run that and it takes a little while so we're going to speed things up here and you can see it takes just under 30 seconds to do the embeddings for all those it's kind of about what's that about 0.1 seconds per document and it's 2400 or just over characters per second and then if we can have a look what does one of those uh, documents embeddings elements look like and you can see we've got a tuple it's got the document and then it's got the embeddings so now part four, storing the embedding somewhere. Now you can choose whichever database you like. I quite like using Quadrant, so I'm gonna install that. And then we're gonna import Quadrant, the Quadrant client and then a couple of classes from the models module. And we're gonna import UID and then we're gonna initialize our Quadrant client. Now if you pass in a path, it's actually not using Quadrant at all. It's using a embedded SQL Lite database. So to be honest, you can use anything you like here. So feel, feel free to replace in this section your favorite database. Next, we're gonna create a collection. We'll call it podcast and then we need to tell it how big the embeddings are going to be so they're actually 1024 as each of those arrays of floating point numbers and we'll use the cosine uh, distance to, to work out which is the most similar to the question that we ask we're now going to create a points array it's going to have an id it's going to have the embeddings and then you can also pass in some metadata so we're going to just put in the text so that we know what comes back and then we'll call the upsert function to ingest this data in and you can see uh, it suggested we can have a look at that operation info and it says the operation has completed. Now for querying that data. So we're going to create a uh, search query. So what did they say about Claude Sonnet? We've then got to create a query vector for that search query. And then we'll call client.search. Remember, tell it what's the collection name, what's the query vector, how many results do you want? We'll say three, and then we'll run that. So we can then have a look at the results. So you can see the first thing that comes up is right at the beginning of the podcast where they introduce Claude Sonnet 3 and say they're going to test drive it. They, there's then another bit, this seems kind of less relevant. It almost looks like we've lost a bit of context. And then the third result is sort of just talking about Claude in general. So this is not actually about Claude's sonnet. So that was retrieval. It's done a reasonable job there. We could probably play around with the chunk size to see if we can get some better results. But for the moment, let's go and have a look at the generation step. So I'm going to be using a different LLM here. So I quite like Llama 3. And for a laptop, the Llama 3 8B model is, uh, is probably a pretty good one to go with. Again, we're using a GGUF file. Again, I'll link that in the description below. We need to create ourselves a prompt template. So we're going to say, you're a helpful assistant who answers questions using only the provided context. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. And then we're going to pass in some context. So this is a variable uh, that we're going to pass in. You can call it anything you like. And then we're going to say, and here's the question again. It could be question. You can name it whatever you like. Right now we're going to call that Llama 3 LLM. We're going to say create chat completion. And then we'll pass in our messages. So we're going to just do one message. It's going to be the user message. We're going to then call format on the template. We'll pass in the context. Again, remember that could be any value you like. And we're going to get that the, the, the payload from the search results. And then we'll pass in our question. And we're going to tell it to stream the results so that we can see the results straight away rather than waiting for it to generate the entire thing. And then we'll iterate over the stream, pulling out each chunk and printing it out to the page. And you can see it comes back. So according to the provider context, Chris says he daily drove Claude Sonnet for an entire week and enjoyed the experience. He found Claude's approach to be more helpful than some other AI models because it represents paths or options, allowing users to dig deeper into tools instead of getting in, stuck in a hole. And then it says he, he he seems to have had a positive experience. So it's actually done a pretty good job, I would say, of kind of summarizing uh, all the information that we had in those three results. So as I say, we're not doing something really complicated. This is pretty much as basic uh, as you can get. If you want to see a little bit more complicated uh, rag, uh, set up. Have a look at this video here where we look at the Langchain parent-child retriever technique.